Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's talk about the controls on your earbud and earpod headphones. So if you recently bought an iPhone or an iPod, you got a set of earpod headphones from Apple, and the older ones were called earbuds, but they all had the same controller on here, at least for the last few years. It's a three-button controller, and there's a lot of things you can do with it you may not know about. Now, of the three buttons, the two obvious ones are the plus and minus, and they're controls for volume. Hit the plus button and you increase the volume and the minus button lowers the volume. And as you probably figured out you can uh, press and hold them and it will uh, raise and lower the volume continuously. So you can quickly silence your device by uh, pressing the minus button and holding. But the center button is where all the power is. There's a lot you can do with the center button. If you're using an iOS device uh, you can use the center button to pause and resume music, assuming you're listening to your music app. Uh, but it also works on most other audio playback apps. So if you're using, say, Spotify or Pandora or uh, just about anything like Audible, you can pause and resume using one quick press on the center button. And it is important to note that your device doesn't have to be unlocked and the app running in the front for this to work. You can start a song in the music app and go to another app and still use that center button to pause and resume the music that's playing back. And you can actually even lock your device, put it in your pocket, and still use the center button to pause and resume music. So it's a, an input that works regardless of the mode that your device is in or whether or not the app playing the music at the time is in the front. But what else does the center button do? Well, if you press it quickly twice it will finish the current playing song and jump to the next one. So in your playlist or whatever you're doing um, it will just jump to the next one. And likewise you can go back to the previous one with three quick presses. Now if you're in the middle of a song it will jump back to the beginning of the song you're listening to. And if you do three quick presses again right there at the beginning of the song it will then return to the previous song. Not all apps have a previous song and you may actually be at the beginning of a playlist or something. But in general you can use 3 to go back, 2 to go forward. But you can also fast forward and rewind inside of a song. To do that you do two presses but on the second press you hold down and as you're holding down now you'll hear the music quickly advancing as you're fast forwarding. Likewise, you can do three quick presses, the third one held down and it starts rewinding and just simply lift your finger up when you're done and you get to the spot that you want. Now if you're using your iPhone and you get a phone call or even if you're using your iPad and say you get a FaceTime call, you can actually use the center button to answer the call. Just press it once and it stops whatever music is playing and you're now speaking with the person that called. If you want to refuse the call, the way to do that is press and hold for a second or two and then release and that will basically send the call directly to voicemail. Now you can also use the center button to activate Siri on your iPhone or recent iPad. To do this at any time whether you're listening to music or not you've got it plugged in you can press and hold down uh, until you hear the Siri tone and then you can speak using the microphone that's also in here on the other side of the controller. This way you can interact with Siri while leaving your iPhone in your pocket when you're say walking or running or biking. Uh, or even driving you can activate it without actually even looking at the screen or having the device in your hand. Now there's one more kind of hidden control in there and it involves the plus button, the volume up button. If you're running the camera app on your iPhone or iPad you can use this as the shutter release button instead of pressing the button on the screen. So this can help in a variety of situations like for instance you've got your iPhone mounted on some sort of tripod device and you don't want to touch it to take a picture or uh, you're kind of holding it away from you and uh, using the rear facing camera to take a picture of yourself and you can't quite find the button with your finger because you can't see the screen. You can of course use the volume up button on the body of the device too but sometimes it's useful to have that control further away from the iPhone or if it's in a tripod situation you're not actually touching or moving the tripod by physically interacting with the device. Now I should note that I'm talking about iOS devices like the iPad, iPod Touch, and iPhone here. The controls actually do some different things if you're using an iPod Shuffle because there's no screen on the iPod Shuffle. So you can go to this document at Apple here if you missed this. This also came uh, should have come with your iPod Shuffle on a little description. And there's all sorts of things you can do to interact with the iPod Shuffle using these controls and the light on the Shuffle itself. 
Another cool thing you may not know about these controls is they also, for the most part, work if you plug them into your Mac. So if you use the ear pods as the headphones for your Mac and you want to play and pause music, you can, use, you can use the center button for that. You can also use the up and down volume buttons and some of the various other controls to skip forward and rewind, uh, etc. So these work on the Mac as well as on iOS devices. Hope you found this useful. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. If you found this video useful, there's one thing you can do for me in return. It won't cost you anything and it'll just take you a few seconds. If you're not already at MacMost.com, go there and then look for the video you just watched and go to that page. Underneath the video you'll see a bunch of different links that help you share the video with friends. Take a second to click the like button. This sends a signal out to the rest of the internet that the video is worth watching. Thanks.